şey falan. Değil mi? Şey, ben de...
Good evening all. I extend a warm welcome to all the alumnus, faculty members, esteemed colleagues, students and interns. We have gathered here for the alumni guest lecture series on the topic of physiotherapy and its ongoing trends and prospects. I welcome our beloved principal and judge on the device. Now, I invite our beloved principal uh, to grace us with the best welcoming words. I thank all the students, the final year and second years, for having gathered here. And I want to ask Sari for the uh, for the final years because yesterday by this time they had come to me and asked for additional you know, what do you call additional days for them to prepare for their exams. You know, still already. They have got 15 days. We have given 15 days for them to prepare. But uh, whatever we give, no, the other end would always keep residing. They will not say no. So I told them that it is not possible. They have be give, given a particular holiday from the uh, Tuesday, the next week, Tuesday onwards. So all the best for your exams. Prepare them, do well. And uh, today we have gathered here for the uh, alumni lecture series. Every month it is going on uh, since uh, February 2024. The first program was done by Sir Anand, and the second program is done by today by Mr. John Sandman. Many of you, I think, uh, you know Mr. John Sandman. Did you know or you have come across with him? You know him? He, uh, he is our first batch alumni, belonging to 1999 batch. He is uh, the topper in uh, his project. He has secured the highest mark in his project. Uh, so he, after his graduation, he was working with us for some time in the clinical area. Later, he came to college, joined us tutor, where he was working for a few years. Then uh, he went to his hometown, right, John? So he went to his hometown and he gathered experience. Today the topic is, uh, you all know the topic? Are you aware of the topic? It is not a class. You can answer. Yes, sir. What is the topic? See our alumnus who is answering. Actually, I expected it from the students. Old is gold always. Then you also must be equal to gold. I mean, you students, you must be more focused to what you are. So I would read out, I have the privilege and honor to read the uh, uh, profile of uh, John Samuel. So currently he is working with us, so it's an honor to us. He did his graduation from our college, GSC College of Physiotherapy in 1999 back. His topic, which has touched the first mark for him, was the topic was efficacy of motor relearning program on physical performance of lower extremity in patients with stroke. He had worked in various clinical settings. Hospitals, rehabilitation centers, fitness centers. As I said earlier, he, after graduation, joined with the hospitals as clinical physiotherapist. 
later got transferred to the college as student, PhD College of Physiotherapy. He had pursued his international bridging program in Continental Institute of International Sciences, Chandigarh, Punjab, between 2009 and 2010. Then later he went to his hometown addressing diabetic patients, wherein he had worked with the diabetic food care patients on, on, on electrodiagnostic examinations of those patients. Later he worked with a reputed fitness center at his hometown. He was working as physiotherapist in CISA Rehabilitation Center for three years, as a senior physiotherapist in CISA Karunia Community Hospital for four years. Subsequently, he joined again in PhD Hospital three years, since three years, currently working in the Department of Pulmonology, PhD Hospital. He is an American Heart Association certified VLS certified provider, and he is an instructor of VLS. He is also running YouTube channels, Eliza's Chariot and Physio Way 2 k wherein he addresses much on the health aspects of health care. He had also given a presentation to the delegates of Harvard University, Lancet Commission team on the title Robotics in Healthcare. And also in the Youth Red Cross Society National Conference, he has addressed the conference gathering. He is an active member in Rotaract Club and he has addressed the club members on the online uh, World Mental Health Day celebration. He was invited for the prestigious University of Madras by the prestigious University of Madras for the S. Subramania Iyer Endowment Lecture on Bible manuscripts and on archaeological evidences to the PhD scholars. He is much interested in Rehabilitation science and, and in movement analysis. So, this is his very short brief profile. With this, I invite all alumnus, our alumnus uh, from various places, various hospitals, and also I invite and welcome all our alumnus office bearers, and also I welcome Mr. John Samuel who is going to deliver the lectures today. I, I hope you all would, have, would get a wonderful experience and uh, enjoy this evening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. To persist on the topic of uh, physiotherapy and its ongoing trends and prospects, I welcome Mr. John Samuel Abbott. He is a senior physiotherapist working at PSU hospitals. He did his undergraduate in PhD College of Physiotherapy in 1999. After his physiotherapy program, he got the opportunity to work as a clinical physiotherapist in PSG Hospital and as a tutor in PSG College of Physiotherapy. Then he pursued international bridging program in Continental Institute of International Sciences, Chandigarh, Punjab, in the year 2009 and 2010. Then he was working as a chief physiotherapist in a reputed fitness center and as a clinical physiotherapist in diabetic specialty of hospital. And then he worked as a physiotherapist in Seisha Rehabilitation Center for three years and as a senior physiotherapist in Seisha Karunya Community Hospital for the uh, four years. Currently, he is working as a senior physiotherapist in the Department of Pulmonology, PSU Hospital. He has given a presentation to delegates of Harvard University and Lancet Commission team on the title of Robotics in Healthcare and also given a presentation in Youth Red Cross Society National Conference a few years ago. He is, he is more interested in all fields of physiotherapy, rehabilitation science, technical advancement in healthcare, and in mobile analysis. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, as you can say, I want to imagine alumnus of prestigious PhD College of Physiotherapy. I know that all of you are happy now.
also its uh, second alumnus uh, lecture series uh, so reported. So as a student of uh, my my own college, they are so proud to chat in front of you this uh, afternoon time. So today the topic is and last time we had we got this uh, wonderful uh, uh, lecture in a series uh, presented by Mr. On Sidney of 2001 batch. I hope that you can remember. So today uh, uh, from the 99 batch, I'm going to present the ongoing trends in physiotherapy and its concept. Ongoing trends in physiotherapy and its software. So the Physiotherapy uh, is an important part of uh, medical field or healthcare field. So it's been uh, disseminating throughout the, all the departments, all the departments uh, like medicine, neuromedicine, orthopedics, uh, research medicine, then uh, obstetrics and gynecology, and you can go on. So the physiotherapy. Uh, since the time of its creation, it's going on and on and on. It's evolving. So, next slide. So, so, I'm so happy to see this picture. Though I am working here in this campus, though I am coming regularly uh, every day to this campus, but as a student uh, who has studied here, every day I enter this campus with a great excitement. <laughs> So my teacher is here. So this is the uh, institute, and these are the my teachers who have uh, made me as a uh, qualified person to stand in front of you. So when I entered the PhD College of Physiotherapy, I was very poor in my studies. So I thank God, uh, really God, wonderful teachers who have dedicated their life to teach and. Mold me and my, all of my friends uh, in a nice way, and through their continuous guidance, even now, and going on and on. So I really appreciate all their efforts, and I uh, I express my deep gratitude to all of you, sir. And <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. So excellent. So the physical therapist. So now we come to the uh, topic. So, who is physiotherapist? So, we can call it as a physical therapist, or in some countries, uh, the uh, people are calling it as a physical therapist. So, the physical therapist helps to take care of the patient in all phases of healing, from initial diagnosis to the instrumenting and preventive stages of recovery. And as I'm working in a hospital, and though I was working in years, a um, couple of years ago, really, I got a uh, question in my heart, in my mind. So what is the difference between me and nurse? What is the difference between me and a doctor? And what is the difference between me and other type of profession? So I gone through some of the thoughts. Then I finally concluded that the physical therapists, they are doing the wonderful job to make the people to function again. So what are all the treatments the doctors and nurses and other type of professionals are giving? Uh, with the form of medicine, but all of their care can only be fulfilled when the person sick, stand and walk. So this is only possible by the work of the physiotherapist. So really, I'm proud. I hope that you all will be proud about this. So the physiotherapist is making the crucial part in making the person who is completely functional, mobile, and useful and who can provide his part and his responsibility to him as well as his family and his society. So we are doing the wonderful job. So the, we have to develop ourselves uh, with good knowledge as well as with skill and with uh, very good, uh, what to say, uh, behaviors and very good personalities. So the physical therapists, they are working through the patients from the very initial stages of the hospitalization or even uh, from the very initial stages of the hospitalization, even after they got discharged. 
So we can go to the phone and we can provide the therapy and we can, we can make the people to uh, stand and walk and we can make the paralyzed hands to function again. So you are and we are in a crucial role. Yes. The physical therapy is to help regain and restore the pain-free and comfortable movement and overall help that your person experience prayer to an injury, illness, or disability. Apart from improving the function, apart from improving the uh, movement and mobility, and the physical therapists, they are so powerful and they are so important in reducing the pain of the patient. So all of you might not know the definition of the pain. The pain is a very unpleasant sensation. So yeah, for every person, the pain is an unpleasant one. So we are making that unpleasant one to vanish in the people's life. So, and moreover, as the days go on and go on, our physical therapy is evolving into the further stages and we will do, we will see in further and upcoming slides. The previous slide, previous slide. So, um, um, as the physical therapists, we are not only restoring the health, but moreover, we are also working and improving the wellness. And as a physical therapist, you can give very good physical healing and physical improvement to the patient. As well as, moreover, you can improve their emotional health also. And you can encourage them to regain their vocational activities. So you are working in improving all the aspects of the patient's life. So I'm, I'm going to take this uh, lecture on the topic of ongoing transit physical and prostate. I want to I want to have this lecture to be interposed with the ethics. Do you know what is ethics? What is ethics? Anyone say? Ethics. Ethics is the law and regulation and certain rules we are obliged to follow. No? We, are, we have to follow them. So, so that though we are improving technically or not, but the fundamental is we should know what is ethics. And when we, as a physical therapist or other healthcare professional, when we are failing in the area of ethics, we are failing our role. So I want to mention these principles also in between the slide. So the physical therapist will respect the inherent dignity and rights of all individuals. So we have to respect, we have to give dignity to the patient and to the people who are coming to a clinic, or to a hospital, or to any other healthcare system. Even we may work in a special schools, or even we may work in a rehabilitation center, or we may work in a sports center center. We are working with a, a particular team. But we have to give inherent dignity to the person to whom we are dealing with. And we have to respect the rights of all individuals. The history of physiotherapy. And I need to mention the time of So the history of physiotherapy. So as we are going to see how we have developed and how the physiotherapy is going to evolve in the coming days, in the future days, we have to think about, we have to turn back, we have to roll back our pace, and we have to think how the physiotherapy has emerged and how the physiotherapy has developed. So the physiotherapy has been developed even after many centuries. And uh, that's, that's why really in each and every uh, country, we have the boards and councils and associations. Uh, those may have developed like Chartered Society of Physical Therapy in UK and APT in the United States and IAP in India. So these might have developed in uh, this century or the previous century. But the physiotherapy, the physiotherapy has been created, has been emerged a long time ago. And now, over the centuries, we have come to this stage. Fine. So the physiotherapy is always mingled with practice, context, and research. So the physical therapist, we are always applying the 
evidence based therapy. Am I right? Yes, all the treatment they are, they are providing in exercise therapy or the electrotherapy or in the uh, gait uh, uh, or in the biomechanical way. So, what is the thing? But everything is evidence based techniques, evidence based uh, methods. And how in these days, in this decade, how and where we are standing, where we are standing. What does it really mean to be a modern physiotherapist? What is modern physiotherapist? Can you say anyone? Modern physiotherapist. The physiotherapist in this era, right? Is a modern physiotherapist. Now, in this era, we have come to provide the personalized care to the patient. What is personalized care? The times people have headaches, or the time people can have the abdominal pain or stomach pain. But for each and everyone, the unique treatment approach and unique set of treatment is necessary. Got it? Because each and everyone's headache, the cause is different. The way of their tissue respond to the treatment will be different. Their culture is different. Their choice is different. Their age is different. Their source of cause is different. Got it? So we have to give the personalized care. So as we are going to enter into the patient room or the ward, Insurance or the final year students. So you have to think for this patient, what is the best treatment, the unique treatment I can give? Got it? And for some patient, the chest percussion may be instantly needed. For some patient, the electrical stimulation may be needed on the first day itself. For some people, it may be needed after a few days. So we have to make the proper assessment and examination, and we have to take the proper history and we have to set the First life we can. So that is the first life treatment. So in our hospital reception, you can have seen in the main reception. The CNG hospital is providing the first life we can. So that is the meaning of first life we can. So for each and every person is unique, and each and every one's problem, problem may be same, but each and every one's problem's nature and type is unique. The way of response is unique. So we have to give post life care. Then we should be the leaders in patient education. So whenever I always uh, encourage and motivate the students and the interns that so whenever you enter the patient room, kindly give a good education, good education. We know what is taking exercise and we know what is active exercise. Up to us it is very easy. But the patient doesn't know what is the active exercise. He doesn't know what is the purpose of it. And he doesn't know what is the benefit for which we are providing the people. So the good patient education is very, very important. In modern physical therapists, we have to learn. Our 50 percent of the treatment should be of health education. Got it? Yes. The way we are speaking, the content we are speaking, and what we are conveying to them about the treatment is very, very important. Then we are getting the proactive care. What is proactive care? We have to think ahead. We have to be one step ahead. So if I'm going to give therapy, what will be the patient's response? Whether it will match or not, whether it will improve or not. It's not that we have applied therapy and after we got the results and take it, no, no, it's not. The it, it proactive means we have to take the steps ahead. The patient is weak, so he may fall. So we have to give the fall prevention advices. So these are the proactive advices we have to give, and proactive care is the one important characteristic of the modern physiotherapy, and we have to give the longer term intervention. The need of profession, the healthcare needs of, of and now come to India. The India's population are therefore shifting in significant ways, driving greater demand for both traditional health services and specializations such as physiotherapy. So initially. Uh, when I came to PSG, my people would say, Oh, now we are going to PSG, uh, we are going to study the physiotherapy. Surely you are having a good opportunity, you have a good future in the US or in the UK. It was two decades ago. But now everyone knows about the physiotherapy, okay? So now we have, now the demand on us is greatly increased. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, the people they do not have this much awareness about physiotherapy. So now the need of profession is increased, and moreover, 
the need of car is increased. See, the motor vehicles have not increased, so the motor vehicle accidents have uh, resulted in a great number. So, a lot of people need the opportunity care. And now we are in the pandemic. So, where is the pandemic? Time? So, Nowadays, so you have to think this, and you have to improve yourself with very good knowledge. Though you may be second year, or though you may be first year, or the third year, now this is the time you have to build yourself. Got it? So this is the time we have to, and this is the place we have all the resources. And now I'm able to stand and speak with you and tell this with you because my institute has shaped me as. Where we can grow on that thing. I, we have all we have all the resources. Maybe we got good a library, we got good teachers, a good classroom, and all the facilities are there. So you have to make you to understand that this is the time that you have to build yourself. The shifting now, the lead of profession has been shifted from dealing with patients to interacting with people. So initially the physiotherapy was needed only for getting the yeah, uh, for the treatment. Now the people have become more and more aware about their health and wellness. Got it? So they want to, they, they do know about the, uh, what the non communicable diseases like the diabetes, obesity, and hypertension, and uh, cardiac arrest. So they, they are thinking how to prevent them. So they are taking the steps. So we have to make answers for their need. Then the first is the physical and wellness services. So the wellness services help us to develop the flexibility and strength. I hope that you all are very good in your studies. Uh, you you might have understand about all the uh, physical treatment like electrotherapy and exercise therapy. So I'm not going to cover everything. So don't worry. So the wellness is of improving the health of the patient, like improving the muscle strength and fitness and cardiovascular endurance and everything. And making the people uh, who are who can avoid the, the development of the non-communicable diseases. So, and moreover, the wellness program makes the person who is very productive in the work and in his role to his family as well as to his society. Proper screening to stay tools for improve patient management, allowing for more tailored approaches in physical therapy programs. What is tailored approach? In terms, what is tailor the approach? We go to the tailor, what is making? Take the measurement for your shirt, for your pant, for your suit. Is it exactly giving proper idea fitting clothes for you, garment for you? Am I right? So that is the tailor the treatment. The personalized, personalized treatment is. Nothing but the, the tailored treatment, tailored approaches. So the tailored approaches, the treatment methods, which is unique, which is uniquely needed for a person. Yeah. The fancy fit self movement is specific to radical reduce of the health care, constantly monitoring the people. So now, uh, now we are uh, coming to our uh, subject. Now, what is this person is doing? So he's having his uh, smartwatch, uh, so he's checking out his heart rate and how much calories he burned. And, uh, and now the smartwatch have the facility also, we can check the uh, SPO2 also, then how much we are walking. So all the, even the mobiles, they have the apps we have. So according to the trend, we have to update ourselves. Got it? We have to modernize ourselves. Then only the people will recognize us and we will also be beneficial for the person. Physical therapist shall be trustworthy. Uh, this is the second principle. The physical therapist shall be trustworthy and compassionate. What is trustworthy? Whenever the person conveys the um, important, uh, what to say, uh, important, uh, closely uh, close. Uh, uh, matter or any information, you have to 
protect those details and is not hungry without the patient's details. So as you are going to be a physical therapist, as you are developing yourself as an intern, as a student, you should know, you should know that you have to maintain the facility of the patient and as well as you must be the compassionate young yeah. people. Well, yeah. Now, uh, what is the bigger point brain healing? So now we are going to see about some of the modern treatment methods. Some of the modern treatment of methods. So I hope that some of you might have had a bit uh, uh, trigger point needling poses. So the trigger point brain needling is thing for inserting here fine needles into the muscles where the muscle is so tight and where the muscles become taut. Okay, and and moreover, where the pain, muscular pain is there, huh? with uh, continuous and long-standing muscle spasm. So for them, they will a lot of courses are available right? in our alumni. Also, you can see alumni too. Uh, the trigger point needle that physical therapist can perform. So while I was working in our previous my previous hospital before coming here in our Sisha Karuna Hospital, we will do the dry needling. So that is the that is the ultrasound guided track dry needling. So we were actually uh, making a study for that. So we will um, make the ultrasound to go on the like based trapezius or rhomboids, like the FNAC. So we will exactly find where the trigger point is there, and we will insert a fine needle, and moreover we will give the treatment. Gradually the patient got the good relief. So when strained or overused the muscles, the myofascial trigger point. The dry needling is very effective. A trigger point is highly irritable, localized spot of exquisite tenderness in a palpable taut band of muscle tissue. This is the ultrasound guided dry needling. The ultrasound has been not been shown here. Now we can have the ultrasound. Then we can work with the doctor and we can make this ultrasound guided dry needle. So, the tip of the fine needle is exactly into the node, in the trigger point. Huh? The trigger point. So, where the muscle is done. So, where it is uh, inserted and, and exactly, it's gradually to reduce the muscle spasm and pain by releasing the endorphin and encapsulants. So you know the various uh, methods of pain reduction method, am I right? Pain gauge mechanisms, designing pain operation, suppression system, uh, pain gauge mechanism. So through those various methods, the pain will gradually go. So this is one of the uh, study of which I was taught uh, in public. The effectiveness of brain aging for my patient trigger points associated with the neck pain symptoms. So in down, you can see the result. Uh, the low to moderate evidence suggests that the brain even can be affected by extreme pain intensity and pain-related disability in individuals with neck pain symptom associated with trigger points of the problem. So it is effective in reducing the pain intensity and pain-related disability in individuals. The patients with the trapezius hypothesis like this are the myofascial uh, tightness. They, they become so tired and so fatigued, their productivity might have come down. They recently fall into sleep and they cannot work for the long time. And this trigger point brain healing is a very good factor. And don't forget that not only the, dry, uh, the trigger point needling, but our massage and our basic treatment is also so effective, like ultrasound therapy and everything. So it involves the therapist inserting a happy monofilament needle into the trigger point into the muscle, causing the muscle to contract and release, which really the trigger point will often activate the brain to release endorphin. And you will see where the endorphin is secreted, endorphin and toughness. I hope that tomorrow you will answer. So patients often feel better. After just one day, one dry evening session, which others gradually feel relief from muscle pain after only a few sessions. So, this is the therapist uh, 
is when I'm doing. So education only from the oxidant biomechanics. So we will call this a economics. So uh, even for the people, even for the person who is involved in the high earth blood, who is involved in the very high level sport, for them, the biomechanics is very, very important to maintain their health and to make their uh, and to uh, assure his or her maximum athletic performance. Then only he can achieve the better. And moreover, whenever we are making the proper biomechanics, they can avoid many intermittent short term injuries. Okay. You're welcome, my son, from 2002 batch. Thank you, thank you. So the principle four, they perform the two therapies and demonstrate integrity in their relationship with patients and clients and family. So now we have already seen we are trustworthy, we must make the sound judgments, and we must have the good integrity in our relationship. So as a student, many times we study the subject and we try to develop these. Personalities. So we have to develop these also. Yeah. And we must maintain our integral relationships with the patients, clients, families, subjects, and students, and participants, and everyone. So, so economics is related to new branch of science, which is celebrated its 15th century in 1999. So that is our branch. But relied on research carried out in many other older established scientific areas such as engineering. Physiology and psychology. So, uh, why the economics is important? Why the economical advice is important? So, if a person is working in a company or a software company or any other company, right? so the financial is full of industry and uh, many entities uh, have a lot of industry. In each and every work, the occupation related stress and pain is there. So, uh, according to the state of Australia, $60 billion is spent for the Occupation work related injuries are lost. So, if we are giving the proper economical advices, we can cut out all this expenditure for a person and we can make them healthy and safer and productive one. So, this is also an important role of the physical therapist. Yeah. Yeah. How does economics work? The anthropometry by working on the several disciplines, body sciences, shapes, populations, then biomechanics, then environmental physics, then applied psychology and social psychology. So, how this we know? Yeah. So, this is the proper biomechanics we have to maintain. So, whenever a person is working for three or four or eight hours of a computer, so, we must maintain the proper environment. No person will know this. So, we, the physical therapist, we have to teach and we have to educate. Got it? We have to teach and educate them. Uh, how the upper back, how much should be the height of the seat, and how much should be the height of the mouth, and how far the monitor should be from the eyes, and how the neck angle should be. So, by having all these proper biomechanics and the ergonomical principles for maintaining the workplace, we can assure the injury free. And safe uh, working environment. Okay. So this is a tight sitting posture. So you can see uh, how the person is uh, sitting. Right? The long way in the right? How the person, even though he's standing, he's trying to maintain the good uh, proper body and hands. So the central man grab is going within the base of the foot, and the low strain is going to the lower back. And So this is the low level laser therapy. Huh? So you know you might have studied the laser and the therapy. So the low level laser therapy, the laser therapy is used in the pain reduction and the tissue healing and reduce inflammation and promote the tissue healing. Yeah. So uh, you can see how the laser can reduce inflammation. Yeah. So how even a nerve injury can be treated with the laser. By a physical therapist. So, uh, the laser would accelerate its nerves and regeneration, and it will increase the frequency of the action potential. It will increase the rate of 
no challenge. So we see, so uh, previous uh, 10 years ago, I was working in a hospital and I was supposed to take the electrophysiological studies. What are the electrophysiological studies? The neoconnection study, the local potentials and the engines and everything. Okay. So that if the person has got something in this muscle, one problem is that is nerve conduction, if anything is nerve conduction, is that the nerve conduction will be delayed. So by giving the laser, we can treat them and we can restore the good in to the patient. This class four laser therapy machine takes central stage at the critical level for internet hospital medical department. We have the reason we have a PR conference in PS hospital. And uh, that we have seen uh, the physical therapy is the main place where the regional medicines are uh, the regional medical equipment are coming. So so as the modern physical push as Physical push working in an internet, uh, uh, you know, you have to update yourself with the modern equipment and you have to, you have to be very knowledgeable about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, this is uh, one of the mission which was the positive exhibition. The people shall fulfill their legal and professional obligations. Yeah, we should. We must be always fulfill and fulfill our legal and professional obligations. So, what is your obligation? We have to read and study and get involved. So, like that, as a physiotherapist, we have to fulfill our legal and professional obligations. Yeah. Then we come to the sports physiotherapy. You know all about the sports physiotherapy, you might have more. The International Federation of Sports Physiotherapy states that the sports physiotherapy is a growing specialization in patients which is trying to promote an active lifestyle and athletic excellence. So, the physical therapist, we can promote the active lifestyle and athletic performance and excellence. So, uh, next section. So, we can prevent the injuries and we can provide the treatment in various stages and we can make the health that was not injured return back. To the is gain is to track or to feel the by getting proper sports physical therapy and treatments. So the sports physical therapist can be a, not only be a person who can provide the treatment and advice, but he can also be a good advisor, he can also be a good professional leader and innovator. Got it? Sports physical therapy, yeah. Injury treatment, prevention, and performance enhancement, and rehabilitation. He has his crucial goals. So, we call this sports to the production to have good personal qualities, accessible communication skills, good professional and interesting elements. There are very treatment options available for today. So, this is the another one treatment method. It is the extra therapy. Uh, you can ultrasound. The surgical decompression. So after our treatment, after the surgical decompression, that will also benefit person in law. The aquatic exercises, the aquatic exercises are very really, uh, crucial. Uh, um, so uh, in non-health settings, uh, the uh, clinics and the hospitals have their aquatic uh, pools and uh, tanks. And then we can give the treatment. So by aquatic therapy, we can give treatment even after the orthopedic surgeries, or uh, the person with the uh, cerebral palsy, or the person with the uh, neurological uh, disorders like that. Uh, so we can use the aquatic exercises uh, also in a very efficient way by using the uh, the Vyanti principle. Okay. So here you can see at the previous match. Here, here you can see three years, three years. Three years. So uh, for a child, uh, they are dealing with treatment with the ball in order to improve his neck control and his neck balance. And here is one child is standing in the paraphernalia, and another one child yeah, is standing uh, a small body support. That's one. 
eight times to the beginning. So, here also, is it the same thing? Eight times. So, the another one is the chicken. The chicken is very common. That's the case. When I was working in the previous cell center. So we had a lot of patients. So the hospital was combined uh, uh, with the university. So a lot of university students would come after their games with a lot of uh, ankle injuries and knee injuries. The patients would come even with the thumb injuries. So we give the treatment with the game. Yeah. So what are so one of the treatments that we are getting is the evidence-based treatment huh? to the proper research methods. Physical therapy so we can get expertise to the lifelong acquisition, refinement of knowledge. So that's what we are doing. Okay, we are doing the lifelong acquisition to so the gathering, to the conference, to the summits, to the meetings. Huh? So we are acquiring our lifelong acquisition and refinement of knowledge and skills. To make ourselves updated. In a lot of countries, they are requesting for the working people to have the sufficient credits and sufficient funds to get promoted into the other uh, next level or uh, to continue their job in the next thing. So the lifelong acquisition is very, very important. So COVID 19 era, the pandemic time has entirely changed the Physical therapy, uh, is the, not only the physical, physical therapy, it affected, it shaped each and every human, each and every person, each and every nation in its own way. You got it? So, as we had got into the COVID 19, we had a lot of loss of time. So, the culinary care became a very crucial one. So, during the panic time, when I joined here, so myself and Manila said, so we are the that kind of thing. We are the CST people. So we call in all the departments and sometimes we send our time in the special order itself because we will not be continuous approach for the respiratory care. So top 10 technologies. Now we have come to the uh, ongoing it's the prospect of physiotherapy. So how the physiotherapy is going to evolve and I am so happy that already we have attained some of the treatment approaches, methods, even in our hospital now. So how it's going to prosper? So the emergency technologies, telehealth, the rehabilitation wearables, rehabilitation robotics, personalized and pre rehab diagnostics, a photo and electrotherapy, the artificial intelligence. What is AI? So you all know I have come across this term often enough. Right. The artificial intelligence. Can you say you want to use AI or what is AI? Then neurofeedback, then lightweight technology, then big data and analytics. So the impact of thought and rehabilitation technology comes in 2020. In 2023, the university technologies are uh, they are 20% in physical therapy. And the advanced rehab wearables like the smartwatches, gadgets, and other uh, wearables, they constitute for 14 percent. The first in life is any rehab diagnostics, 10 percent, photo therapy, and another one major is 15 percent. Even even also giving the technical uh, hospital, I think so. So the technical. So uh, during the pandemic time, during the lockdown time, the people. They sometimes they cannot get, and every for everyone, it's not possible to come to visit hospitals. Even visiting hospital also predisposes them to have developed an infection. So the telehealth provides the wonderful way for the people and access to people to learn and to speak and to communicate with the healthcare provider from by staying this home itself, not it by learning the exercises and getting the advices and getting counseled. Then rehabilitation robotic. 10% the neurofeedback and other methods. Global physical equipment market. And the global physical equipment market is gradually increasing. Gradually increasing. So until now, we are mainly doing our treatment with our hands, but now 
we are they have started to use a lot of machines, a lot of machines and the and the AI and the machine learning and uh, even technologies and researchers in the synthetic field of science, habitation field of science. And not set up, we have to work with the multidisciplinary team. So we have to work with the engineers and the biomechanical uh, and the sports person, and psychologists, the occupation therapists. So we have to involve the multidisciplinary researchers and multidisciplinary treatment plan. The innovation is including the integration of AI and machine learning purposes. The AI is nothing but making the computers to learn and to think and to uh, problem solve by giving them properly uh, structured software and hardware. Okay. Then uh, the available technologies for the use of AI and machine learning make the treatment is more accurate and gives it prevents a lot of injuries and moreover it makes the get the recovery in a very quick way. Got it. Then the virtual reality we want to see that yeah that is right. So the digital technical market in Canada is a wide range of devices and tools. And uh, second, third time, you can see that it plays a pivotal role in enhancing muscle strength, flexibility, pain management, inflammation reduction, healing promotion, and many. Yeah. Then robotic assisted training. So even in the hospital also we have robotic devices. Am I right? Yeah. Robotic hand device. Yeah. So yeah, whenever you have the posting, huh, you have a very good opportunity to work with those machines. So the robotic assisted training uh, machines, the virtual reality machines, uh, functional electrical simulation, it's been done for a long time. The non-invasive brain stimulation and many other new methods. And what these machines do, it improves the plasticity and excitability. Yeah. So you know what is plasticity? What is it actually? Next 10 minutes, the lecture will be over. What is this? Neuron synopsis. Yes. So, whenever we are teaching, our brain has a wonderful ability. Whenever some part of the brain has got affected, whenever we are giving treatment or therapy, the other part of the brain will, have, will retain, will get the other area functions. That is through the form of the excitement. Why? For what purpose we have to go every day to your patient room and do the same exercise? Why we have to do? Because we are making the brain to develop the synopsis. Got it? We are making the brain to gain, to get the other areas functions and to make the patient to regain his or her function. Here you can see that the neuronal plasticity in how as the recovery has been progressed, how the synopsis, the newly formed synopsis has. Uh, visible to in the third uh, uh, picture. Yeah. The integration of generative AI and physiotherapy could revolutionize patient care and rehabilitation in the coming years. So, uh, you and me have a bright future ahead as a physical therapist, as a part of the rehabilitation team. We have many new technologies to come and emerge as a victorious person. Okay, you got it? So then the robotic has to try, yeah, that's it, obviously. Next, next. Robotics, yeah. So I had the wonderful privilege to take a uh, robotics in healthcare to the delegates of Harvard University and the Lancet Commission team um, in the year 2017, I think so. So six or seven years ago. So that I presented my presentation to them. The, how the rehabilitation robotics are uh, improving and how the future of robots in medicine will help. So the, the robots in the medical field are transforming how surgeries are performed, streamlining, supply delivery and disinfection, and enabling providers to focus on engaging with and caring for patients. Intel offers a diverse portfolio of technology for the development of medical robots including surgical assistance modular and autonomous mobile robots. So in all field of physical therapy, in labs, in pharmacy, in physical therapy, in surgeries, uh, in every lab, the robotics has got its stage. 
Do you know what is this relation? If you come to the uh, reception, hospital reception, you might have known the name of this machine. So it's a Darwin's machine. Huh? Our hospital, I hope that reason I showed this. The process of this. So there's a Darwin's machine performed for high surgeries in the high position. High position. Even the yeah, name of it and the millimeter will be up exactly and exactly. So the patient's recovery will be up and it's got it and the discount. Uh, injury is very, very less, and the recovery speed is very long. The time of hospitalization is very short. Come to the finger for a bit. So, these are the exoskeletons. So, these are the exoskeletons we can. So, here we can see uh, two people, uh, they are walking there and go to this gate uh, time on the body, right support cartilage with the exoskeletons. Huh? So, these skeletons are the robotics, they can operate on its own. Okay, how we are sitting. Yeah, it's over the years the AI enabled computer vision and data analytics have transformed the medical robot, expanding their capabilities into many other areas of their care. They can go and search in uh, Google and Net and see a lot of pictures and a lot of findings and videos in so here. A uh, physical therapist is teaching with a hand function, like as we do in our PMR department. So this is a hand uh, operating uh, robot. What is this? It's a humanoid robot. It's a humanoid robot. So now we the physiotherapy. Even whenever our patients would have the uh, uh, significant, what is a high risk of infection. We can make them to have the access to the robots. So these are the A operation operated machines, uh, structures that can communicate with the patients. Got it? They can communicate, they can give the commands, and they can uh, respond to the patient. So it will make the person as a, uh, as he is so all alone. So it will prevent him to. Uh, how that he is having some someone he is with him, and moreover, these humanoid robots and whenever uh, the high infection uh, time, and not only in the medical field, even in the war field, they are using the humanoid robots to go into the deeper areas where they are there to perform the operations. Got it? So these are the humanoid uh, robots. Now, not only in hospitals, even in, in restaurants and cafes also, the humanoid robots and gradually come. I hope that you all will know. So during the COVID pandemic 19, so these changes we got. So this is another one robot. So here you see an elderly lady communicating and got getting the information through the monitor from the chest part of the robot. Yeah, it's So the use of robotics and automation also extends to research laboratories. The streamlined workflows and risk reduction provided by the medical robotics offer value in many areas. So they are not only giving the facilitating patients, it also gives protection to the working healthcare professionals. As technologies evolve, robots will function more autonomously, eventually performing certain tasks entirely on its own. Yeah, please, please. Then smartphone and healthcare, we are no need to explain everything. We know all about your smartphones. Even you can come and speak a lot, you will speak. So the smartphone, we have a lot of apps and uh, uh, we have, you can go, you can go. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. The room. In the smartphone, we have a lot of applications. Uh, we have, so I have an application in my phone. So that is one of the predominant. All of you know that. So through that, I have started my walking for three weeks. And every day, I can find out how many steps I'm walking. So how many calories I'm burning. So I'm moreover, through the wearable uh, gadgets. So we can have a lot of features. And moreover, through the smartphones, we can get a lot of communications. In our hospital, we in the terminology team also, we communicate often with our WhatsApp. 
So the smartphones have tremendously uh, taken its part in the health care. Okay. Virtual physiotherapists, through the natural language processing, generative AI can act as virtual physiotherapists, providing real time guidance and feedback to patients during remote rehabilitation discussion. So we can make particular robots with particular software and research in hardware. We can make them to give treatment and whenever. It's not replacing the human, it's only in special circumstances. Next, next slide, next slide, next slide, next slide, next slide. The potential benefits of uh, benefits are the improved patient outcomes, increased accessibility, cost effectiveness, and enhanced research capabilities. Yeah. But as we are seeing the modern trends and te technologies, as is the prospect of physical therapy, and everything, the challenges are there, like the data privacy and security and the ethical considerations, the technical limitations and adoption barriers. So these uh, challenges are certainly there. So the companies and the research uh, institutes, they are working hard to overcome them before introducing it to the market. Principal age, physical therapy should participate in efforts to meet the health needs of people locally, nationally, and globally. Yeah. Next slide, next slide. This is right. Yeah. Next, 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 next. Next, next. Next, next. So the innovative technologies try to be able uh, many times the people cannot come to a clinic as we seen earlier. So it connects the people, it connects the healthcare provider and patient, it connects healthcare provider and another one healthcare provider, it connects healthcare provider with other professionals, it connects the healthcare provider with his research colleague and with his research scholar. So the innovative technology is connecting the people and not only the communication, social media, but the data which are by stored in these technologies can easily be displayed to everyone, can easily uh, be communicated with everyone. Yeah. So I stay to up to date with the latest technologies. So this is we we are virtual reality in healthcare. So the virtual reality technology is being used to enhance we have the people We have we are we have we are we have it is not immersive. So we have also uh, we are uh, in our hospital. So so immersive we are is also there. Immersive means we will give uh, that glass like uh, material uh, to the equipment to the patient. So once you pass, he will consider as he is in some other atmosphere. Okay, the scene, the sounds, he is immersed in some other situation. For example, in our driving schools, we know the lot of driving schools they have the uh, simulators for practicing, even for the uh, in in, our, in the access also for practicing the states, even in our cities also. A lot of driving schools have the have the simulation, the virtual related uh, virtual reality machines they have. So those are the immersive methods. So uh, these used to enhance rehabilitation program by immersing patients in virtual environment. Therapists can create interactive and engaging exercises that simulate real life scenarios. We cannot make entirely change everything. We can give treatment, we can give exercises. But this virtual reality gives us an additional opportunity and facility to provide the artificial real life scenario. It's artificial, it's not real, but however, it's like the real life scenario. So it can be particularly beneficial for patients with the mobility limitations of pair of the movements. So VR is also mainly useful in the pain management. It can be used as a distraction technique to alleviate pain and discomfort during the medical procedures in chronic pain management. In rehabilitation also, by interactive exercise and stimulation, the VR is so helpful in the recovery process. So, in we are also the benefits and challenges of that. The benefits are improved balance, balance and gait, patient independence is increased, and patient motivation is increased. And the challenges are there. Challenges are the implementation of 
So the cost of the machines is very high. So the applicability information is lacking. The evidence-based patient-related factors are still lacking. So there's still the challenges are there. So these are the ongoing researches in the physiotherapy. So these are the benefits and challenges for same slide. So these are the smartphones and healthcare. Go ahead, go ahead. So uh, smartphones give us the ability to, uh, to compute our functions. And this was first conceptual by Toda in 1971. So we have the smartphone. The smartphone is nothing but just small computers. You know? So we can send the mail and we can see videos and we can chat with everyone. And moreover, we have all the features like the computers. We can we have the camera and everything, internet access and everything connectivity. Next, 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 next. <clears throat> then future features, how the smartphones is going to be evolved, what are the researchers are going, like in Intel or the Google or the other uh, leading tech companies, the augmented reality with smartphones. Life goes of places and uh, flexible screens, inbuilt projectors, and seamless voice control, trans flexible CD displays, then indoor position system to six percent technology like humans. So these are the current researches are going. <clears throat> so these are the various research areas uh, in the other fields in the health and bioscience. At the same time, the machine intelligence, natural language processing, human computer interaction, and these are the various fields, data mining modeling. So these, by what called these teams only, we are getting these machines. Okay? Not only the from the healthcare part, not only the engineers, but many interdisciplinary workers, they're working together and making the devices we have. <coughs> So we have multidisciplinary team in hospitals or rehab centers. So you should think yourself. So you should develop yourself, not only the uh, physical therapist is confined to a particular area, but you must be able to work with a lot of other field workers in your coming area. In your, you may go and study further, or you may involve with rehab related uh, researches, or you may work anywhere you work special schools or any other work. So you must learn yourself, you must shape yourself to be a part of multidisciplinarity in the any healthcare city. So what are the other so after your physical therapy, uh, not only we have a set of courses, no, we have thousands of courses we have. So you can go and learn you can do your rehabilitation science researches. You can do your uh, current upcoming uh, courses, and you can be a uh, what to say uh, other healthcare setting uh, setting, or you can work in your uh, um, special schools and neuroscience researches. So you have a lot of this. So don't confine yourself. Go and widen your knowledge. This will make you think about your future and which is suitable for you and you can choose and you can develop yourself and you can be a better physiotherapist. So these are the final thoughts. Continues to be excellent. Embrace change, contradictions and celebrate uncertainties. Ask different questions, challenge ourselves, challenge yourselves. Keep up to date, evolve. So uh, I thank all uh, my colleagues and my teachers and the mentors and patients uh, who helped me to carry out the presentation and the interview with the main guidance. Thank you so much. Thank you.
We have a small announcement. The twenty uh, fifth year alumni meet. It is all about the alumni meet to be conducted. You did you interact with the uh, your senior alumni, Tom sir? Did you ask him how the college has transformed since ninety nine to twenty four? Did you? Uh,
Would you like to join with this celebration? So the countdown starts. It is on August third and fourth. The 25th uh, uh, year of this uh, college, we would have the alumni meet for the first batch of students, that is the 1999 batch. So you wait for the day, the countdown starts, and you all must join with them. Is that okay? Thank you. Not with the subject, otherwise also you can communicate with any other. I just want uh, John to brief uh, uh, how was his uh, batch, uh, what was the mindset they had during those days, how did they, how were they good at studies, how were they good at uh, sports, extracurricular, co-curricular, and uh, where are their classmates based, what are they doing, how is this about, maybe this is the right time that you all must know, John please. Thanks. So, uh, as we were coming to the PSG year 99, we were the first batch of the college. So, not only a college, but the course was also a new college. So, and you know, parents, our parents came and they brought us here. We got the one to pay us the inauguration. Even uh, since the first day itself, I can feel it's so light as well in my mind. So we got uh, the ones behind, and we really have fantastic teachers. They were really so sacrificial. I can remember uh, Shobra and Doran and Shrijab and many other my teachers and uh, my Ravikumar sir. And they were so helpful. So, and uh, I think our uh, professor Mahesh sir, and he was the first, uh, the first graduate in Padman, I think so. So, in, in those days, the start of the country, we have the science teaching also. And all of my teachers, uh, when I entered here, I was uh, the last student in the college, because in the class, I'll come to later. So, uh, we got the wonderful setup here. Uh, the lot of times, uh, even the year beginning, the first year we had our classes with the medicine students. So, the anatomy, physiology, and yeah, also accompanied with them. So, only the physiotherapy and the nursing that the other uh, courses apart from the medicine. So, uh, and whenever I was walking with, with my interns, and I was always uh, interested uh, in 
this uh, uh, classroom, the beginning classroom, this uh, building, this was this particular department. Now this department has changed to so an always and tell them. So and uh, then as gradually gone, we uh, got, but uh, in our batch, uh, we, we made a lot of uh, mistakes actually, frankly, we said. In those days, we did not uh, understand uh, teachers, uh, teachings and uh, teachers, the corrections. So many times we, we try to do a lot of funny things and because of that, we will get caught and we got the punishment. But uh, so, it, so it was, but many times our teachers would say after the juniors came, uh, really the 99 batch, uh, they have done their, their best. So in my life, uh, when I entered here, I was very poor in studies. So in my first anatomy exam, I had a few months ago, I was interviewed by a television. So that I said that in my first uh, anatomy exam, I got four marks uh, <laughs> in PhD college of physiotherapy. But uh, to my tremendous sacrifice, picking up the teachers, when I completed, I became the top. So this was the particularly that I can say to my colleagues and the teachers to so their shape. It's very important to make the a student who is so sound and who is so bright in the studies, but it is very difficult for a person who is so weak, uh, so, uh, what to say, uh, homesick and so poor in bias and so poor in his uh, grasping the things, poor in understanding the principles. But my teachers and the resources that you know, we have, we got the good uh, libraries and uh, we got good. Uh, Ah. Yeah, we had uh, the, the semester system. So we had in our semester system, we had uh, four uh, breaks. So I think you have two breaks, but we had four breaks. The second semester, fourth semester, seventh semester, and eighth semester. So in the first semester, it was okay, we can carry on. In the second semester, the batch, nearly half of the batch came into the additional batch. I will go to part of the tradition back. Then, fourth set. Fourth set, uh, some of the filters were like there. So, in those days, the evaluation uh, was good. But nowadays, I heard that the evaluation is so lean for you. So, uh, so it's really good news for all of your students. So, try to study well. And we had break in our seventh also. And some of our juniors, they have studied even more than. Six or seven years also. Yeah, yeah, they stood up, they failed in the practical. Yeah. <laughs> the students, they failed in practicals. Uh, the students, they will not, uh, sometimes they will not come regularly, you got the proxy materials. So now we got the good uh, identification machines in new building just behind our IMS block. There you can see the patient identification system. In those days, some boxes also be there. So sometimes the failures, a lot of times the failures, they have ruined their life. But thank God, uh, again, they got uh, realized, they learned, and now they are in very complex. I would say they are in better level than me. So, uh, and moreover, when uh, I, yeah. My classmates and my, a lot of my classmates, they are abroad. And one of the classmates, you know, Dr. Ashokan, Dr. Ashokan, yeah, he has taken his presentation in our last alumni meet. So he's a World Congress uh, uh, member of from the Asia. So he's an important executive board of the World Physical Congress. So that's a great uh, proud for all of us. So uh, our principal said, and our madam, like Mahalachi Man, Deepa Man, they have contributed to the Ashok success a lot. So, and, uh, and moreover, a lot of my students, uh, he's now he's working in the University of Sacha in the back, and a lot of my friends there in the Canada, uh, two, three, or four, more than five people they work in Canada, and a few people there in the United States, in New York, and in some other states, and uh, a lot of people, a few, and one of my friends is doing the a PhD in the University of South Australia. 
is the karma function. So he's doing so he was from Buddha. Uh, those days we got a lot of NRE students from the other country, not only from India, a lot of students from the other countries. So he's from Bhutan. Now he's doing the PhD in the uh, University of South Australia. And some of the friends, they are in the United Kingdom, the UK. And uh, so like this, my investments, uh, they have been disseminated throughout the globe. And they are doing uh, their best and their job in the society. So we often communicate with them. After the uh, conduction of the previous alumni, we frequently, and we can every day, we are in touch. We uh, twice or thrice or four times we are in keep in contact, uh, we are communicating. So uh, so in this way, uh, the PhD follicle physiotherapy has helped a lot. Uh, a few minutes is not enough, you know, exactly. And moreover, that we got a wonderful hospital setup, clinical setup. So one of the things that we have learned, so we came here and uh, studied that. So while we entered this college, we had only the old block. So while we were doing the pre-final and final year, the so final year, the A block was built. So, uh, so now we have the even better uh, infrastructure than us. And uh, so uh, trying to go and read every day in the library. And I'm the person who always uh, stick to the library and I always spend my time in the library to use your resources and the facilities and provisions. And the uh, teachers uh, help and their guidance always, which will be of great help for you. And surely it will come to the greater heights. So, yeah, yeah, in Tikitaki uh, College, even uh, from uh, the time we came here, the PhD College of Physiotherapy, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was founded in that, in that time, right? in that time. Before that, PhD had so many institutions like the INS and College of Art and Science, PhD College of Technology, and many other uh, institutions of that, PhD Institute of Management. So the PhD itself carries its brand and its identity. Okay, so all of our parents, so when they came here, they put us. But <laughs> as we entered here, uh, there were a lot of competitions that were there in our city also. Which is better in physiotherapy, but now we can see the PSO College of Physiotherapy is unique and it is better than any other college and it has all the facilities. And as we are seeing the alumni's position, alumni, where are they alumni? You can easily determine how the PSO College has made the good physiotherapists, the best physiotherapists who can listen to the patients who can help the patients to come up and not only in the clinical setup even in research as well as the teaching so every one alumni is shining at the stars so uh, now the PhD college of physiotherapy is outstanding it's so it's so open it's so uh, easy to say that it's best, better than any other college in other uh, state even it's uh, one of the best colleges in our nation. So, how the physiotherapist is being considered, how the physiotherapist who has been qualified, who has been studied in the PSG college, how he is going to, how he is going to respect it. Uh, how he is going to be estimated. So that is our main point. So the name itself is carry. Uh, we are from DSG and moreover, the way we the way we have been taught, the, the, the way we have uh, acquainted with the clinical skills and the clinical knowledge that have really of a very superior to uh, other institutes that we have seen in so many quiz competitions while we were studying, and after our study, in comparing with the other students' position, the alumni, they are in very top level. As I said, Dr. Shukin and all of my friends, and uh, uh, previously, the last uh, month, uh, Mr. Anand Sivyo from 2001 test, 
uh, came and taken a lecture about the entrepreneurship. So he's been shining as a top in Singapore. So Singapore is a top country. So I am talking about the local, but he is in Singapore and he is shining as one of the best and very really things And that is the benefit of our education in this best institute. Okay? So I, uh, I strongly, boldly, I say this. So you all are privileged people. I hope if it's time a few months, a few years, you'll also be a physiotherapist and shine a star in the society. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want to remember the time with all of you in the afternoon. I would like to know how the time is passed. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. அதுக்கப்புறம் <laughs> 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 இப்பதான் எக்ஸாம் எதுனாலே பாஸ் ஆகிடுவீங்க என்ன பண்ணுவோம் plan to conduct some events for the alumnus we were not able to do it in the time in uh, april mid week uh, again we are uh, planning to sit together and we are trying to formulate an agenda for the alumnus and also for the students so next is edallame undu indha mari presentations irukadu next undu ellame workshops ah irukku podu and it will be happening on saturdays not on fridays okay so it will be happening on saturdays so ungalku edavadhu topics of interest ungalku venuma edavadhu kattukonu nanichinga solunga a few suggestions from the final year last week uh, discussed on the sports related and my elements among them so we are talking with some some of our alumnus who has working in primary in the sports fraternity i mean uh, they are also ready to come and share their knowledge and it will be a workshop based activity and uh, we will be charging minimally for those activities you know and we will also take uh, a less intake not the entire uh, student we can accommodate so it's based on interest primarily So, on the way, you can change the value of it. And also, uh, you also discuss about the events. Alumni meet up, you can see the event, you can see the event. You can see the event, you can see the event. You can see the event, probably before April 15th, you please let us know. Okay? Is that clear? Yeah. 